Cheese, oceans, violins. These are all things that have nothing to do with Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled is a remake of the classic PS1 kart racer, Crash Team Racing. When I reviewed the original Crash Team Racing, I was stiff pretty much the whole time. It was an absolutely incredible game, very hard to fault. It had great driving controls and track design, plenty of content in the form of adventure mode, CTR challenges, relic races and time trials, and also it's Crash. I can't help but love everything Crash. The stranglehold this bandicoot has over my psyche is alarming. I need professional help. But because I'm not willing to fork out hundreds of dollars to cleanse myself of this marsupial obsessed brain fungus, I'm going to stick with it and make the problem worse, and the next step on that journey is CTR's remake Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel. Nitro Fueled is a similar sort of remake to the Insane Trilogy in that it's trying to recreate and modernise the original, presumably with the intention of making it better. I mean obviously, could you imagine if they purposely tried to make it worse? The Insane Trilogy managed to pull off being an improvement over the originals. Can Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled do the same? Let's start those engines and crack on! But not without your fucking seatbelt on! I'm tired of these people thinking they can neglect basic safety precautions. One of these days, you non seatbelt wearing fuckwits are gonna pay the ultimate price, and it's what you deserve. Long live seatbelts! So I figured we'd start with the adventure mode. That was the main thing in the original, and it's also at the top of the menu, so it makes sense to start there. Unlike the original, though, we have some options. You can choose to play Nitro Fueled or Classic Mode. Classic Mode maintains the rules from the original. You can only pick one character for the whole adventure. Nitro Fueled allows you to switch characters at any time and also switch driving styles. In the original, characters were assigned one of four driving styles, turning, balanced, acceleration and speed. But in Nitro Fueled, you have the option to pick any driving style regardless of what character you're playing as. They even added in a brand new driving style called Drift, which is sort of midway between acceleration and speed. This is already a great set of changes, granting you a lot more freedom and customizability than the original game did. And that's all in addition to the difficulty settings. You can choose to play easy mode, medium mode or hard mode. And as you'd expect, it makes the game easier, harder or more medium. I went with hard mode because I'm not a fucking bitch. Easy is too easy, medium is too medium, and considering how much time I've already spent playing this game in the past, I reckon hard will challenge me the most. Well, I mean, obviously it will challenge me the most, it's the most challenging setting. But, you know. As everyone under and above the sun expected, the adventure mode plays out pretty much identically to how it did in the original. You have hub worlds full of multiple racetracks, and your goal is to go around and win races to earn trophies. With enough trophies, you can challenge a boss, and if you beat them, you can enter the next hub world. It's the same deal here as it was in the original, and everything, hub worlds and tracks alike, are structured exactly how they were in the original too. It's pretty much one to one. But what Nitro Fueled has done that the Ensane trilogy did not, was inject new life into the tracks. Not in terms of like, insemination, they didn't inject sperm into this game, it was more in the sense that they took some creative liberties. They took the fairly simple themes of the tracks in the original and took them to the next level. Extra things like animated characters goofing off in the background, effigies of relevant characters sprinkled throughout, and more detailed environments. They went above and beyond in bringing these tracks to life. For example, in the original game, Mystery Caves was a fairly empty and boring looking brown butthole of a track, but for Nitro Fueled, they looked at that and thought, fuck it, let's fill it with dinosaurs. Polar Pass is another good example where they had snow go in racetrack form and thought, fuck it, let's turn it into a polar bear viking village. They put an actual dragon guarding treasure in Dragon Mines. Hot Air Skyway became a flying casino. They even made Slide Coliseum look cool by turning it into the hosting venue for the Piston Cup. This is the sort of thing that Ensane should have done. It just makes these tracks feel more alive, and every time you race through them, you spot a detail you probably didn't notice the last time you raced through them, and they look absolutely brilliant, they have a lot of personality. They did a great job of updating them for this game. As for the driving itself, it's not exactly the same, but it's really close. In the original, drifting and boosting was like heroin. It was so incredibly addicting and satisfying to pull off, and that remains true in Nitro Fueled. But much like how they shook things up with the track presentation, they also made a simple but enormous change to the drift mechanics. I'm not a super nerd so I don't know the specifics of how it all works, but I'll try and explain as best I can. In the original, drift boosting added to your fuel reserves, meaning that when you hit a super high speed boost pad, you'd be able to maintain that high speed for longer. 
However, if you drift boosted during that high speed, it would be cancelled and you'd be brought back down to regular speed. Nitro Fueled made a simple but genius change to this. Instead of killing your speed when you drift boosted, Nitro Fueled made it so that drift boosting extended the duration of your high speed. Now recognisable by the blue flame, Nitro Fueled's top speed can be taken to the limit. The game now allows you to race through the tracks at an unbelievable pace. It can be difficult to maintain, but if you can pull it off, you can blitz through each race like it's nothing. Driving overall has gotten more technical in Nitro Fueled as well. There's a somewhat hidden mechanic in this game called U-Turning. I don't know if it's an intentional inclusion because the game never explicitly refers to it, but it exists. I don't even know if there are any other ways to do it, but I do it like this. I hold down on the D-pad as well as the direction I want to turn in. This allows you to perform a U-turn, which is really helpful for dealing with very tight corners and turns. This, combined with Nitro Fueled's blue flame mechanic, means the potential speeds you can achieve in this game are insane, and it's so much fun to do. If the original game's driving was like heroin, Nitro Fueled's is like super heroin. Heroin on steroids. Steroid heroin. I don't take drugs. <sighs> Playing the adventure mode was a lot of fun. I went through and did everything. All the trophies, of course, all the CTR tokens, minimum gold relics in every track, all the crystal challenges, all the gems. I did all of it. But history repeated itself. Much like with the original, I hungered for more. But that's the great thing about Nitro Fueled. In Nitro Fueled, adventure mode is just the beginning. They could have left it there. They could have simply included the original CTR adventure mode and tracks and called it a day. They had no incentive to go any further, because that's not what a remake like this promises. But they took it further anyway, and included not only every track and battle arena from Crash Nitro Kart, but also introduced eight brand new bonus tracks. I don't know who came up with this idea, but they're a fucking genius. By including these tracks, they basically doubled the amount of content in this game. Seeing the return of the tracks from Nitro Kart was awesome, and not just because it meant more content. It was great to be able to race on these tracks with superior driving controls, because let's face it, Nitro Kart was a bit wonky. So it was so cool to revisit these tracks in Nitro Fueled, which of all the crash racing games has the best driving controls. They obviously had to rework things a bit because Nitro Fueled doesn't have anti-gravity, but sacrificing that was worth the payoff. These tracks are amazing to race on. And what I also love is that a lot of these tracks have been redeemed, in a way, and have been given some individuality. Nitro Kart tracks tended to feel very similar to CTR tracks, or even similar to other Nitro Kart tracks. For example, Inferno Island felt a lot like Crash Cove, and Android Alley and Electron Avenue were both extremely similar. It's like when a comedian steals a joke, or someone comes up with a TV show that is pretty much the same as a TV show that already exists. We don't need to see the real housewives of any more cities. Come up with your own ideas. Enough reality show garbage. Solve world hunger instead. But in Nitro Fueled, that carbon copy situation is no longer a problem. Inferno Island got a complete makeover in which it became nighttime. Now it barely resembles Crash Cove. And speaking of makeovers, look at Electron Avenue. Holy shit. Whoever thought they should take the Android Alley clone and turn it into an 80s vaporwave behemoth of a racetrack is a god among men. It's absolutely incredible. Some tracks like Barren Ruins didn't quite get the same treatment, but they're still all fantastic. And once again, they could have stopped there, but they just kept on going. Over an 8 month period, Nitro Field was updated with a whole load of shit through events called Grand Prix, and among that shit was completely new original tracks. And like everything else in this game, these bonus tracks are amazing. They cover themes that the original CTR and CNK tracks didn't, including Egypt and Persia, Fate Crash crossbreeds with dinosaurs, all sorts of things. We even head into the world of Spyro. That's fucking awesome. This is what I call a crossover. This one racetrack is better than the entirety of Crash and Spyro Fusion. Fuck you, Fusion. And these are some really well-designed tracks as well, with a good variety of quirks and features. Some are quite simple tracks, but others have some really unique features. Drive Through Danger comes to mind there with its toxic burger versus nuclear pizza mechanic, which determines which boost pads are active. It's the Imperials vs Stormcloaks of Nitro Fueled. They're just amazing tracks, and they were so much fun to race on. The Grand Prix system is something I feel I have to mention. Even though Grand Prix have been dead and gone for a while now, I was there when they happened, and it was pretty special. Each month we would be blessed with not only a new track, but a whole bunch of thematically relevant customization items we could use. Characters, skins, carts, wheels, stickers, there's so much stuff in this game. 
and it's not just a bunch of seasonal bullshit. The stuff they included make this game feel like a celebration of the whole series. You've got carts inspired by tag team racing, skins plucked from games all across the series, and characters you'd never expect. Not only do you have all the Nitro Kart characters playable in the base game, but they also later added so much more. Fan favourites like Torna, Embryo, Koala Kong, Nina, Pasadena, Von Clutch. You've got characters like Yaya Panda, who you probably didn't even know existed. You've got characters like Hasty, who definitely didn't exist until this game. Megamix is in this game. They've even got two versions of Rillaroo because the first one was so fucking ugly it caused international outrage. You can play as a crate. I almost can't believe it now, and I witnessed it all happen during the Grand Prix. I love the customization aspect of this game. In fact, I found that the racing element of this racing game did get in the way of my desire to create a bunch of cool loadouts. And that, combined with the fact that the gameplay is so fun and addicting, caused me to go all out. I went through and did all the CTR challenges, I did all the relic races, I did all the crystal challenges, I did all the battle modes, I even did all of the ring rallies. Ring Rally was a game mode added in one of Nitro Fuel's updates, and it's a really fun mode. You're on a timer, and you need to drive through rings to add time on and keep failure at bay. The rings are positioned in a way that encourages you to learn shortcuts and take the most efficient lines in your turns. It's great for new players as they get to discover shortcuts and techniques they didn't know about, and it's great for veteran players as they get to practice these tracks and perfect their driving. I did this for every track. Did I get carried away? Maybe, but I loved it. I loved it so much I put a ring on it. I did also consider doing all the time trials, but since I've already beaten every time trial, I feel like I don't have to prove myself. The addition of VLOAD times and developer times was a cruel but rewarding challenge by the way, it really pushed my skills and sanity to the limit, although I wasn't willing to go through it again. Besides, I was running out of loadout ideas. I could always randomise my loadout, but you get some pretty hideous item combinations with that. These aren't up to standard with the works of art that I create, these abominations are the ones they keep in storage so that people don't see them at the gallery. The very fact that I got so carried away and was willing to do pretty much every mode on every track speaks volumes to just how fantastic this game is. But of course, it's not perfect. The only thing that is perfect is Jesus, and he abandoned this world long ago. I don't believe in Jesus, but I figured I might try and win over that evangelical Christian demographic. They seem like a real friendly bunch, don't they? Thou shalt have no other gods before Nitro Fueled, but unfortunately it has some problems. The first thing that struck me was the loading times. They are abysmal, especially when you consider the fact that this is a modern game. I guarantee you that about 40% of my recorded gameplay footage is just the loading screen. Wrath of Cortex has much faster loading times than this game, and that's saying something. And I'm sure if you have one of those current generation consoles, it wouldn't be that bad, but I don't have one of those. I'm in the silent majority here, I'm a man of the people. No one has a current generation console because they're too expensive and there's nothing on them that's worth the money. I'm poor as fuck and proud of it. But yeah, 45 second load times isn't great. Then you've got the customization items. Now there's nothing wrong with the items themselves, but there is something wrong with how you acquire them. The vast majority of items need to be bought from the pit stop. I would demonstrate this, but my pit stop is empty. To pay for them, you need Wampa Coins. Wampa Coins are earned by completing specific challenges, daily, weekly, and monthly, and they're also awarded for completing races. And in fairness, everything in this game can be bought with these coins. You're not required to do anything more than play the game. The problem is that if you want everything, you have to do so much grinding. You don't earn enough coins at a high enough rate, and the items are more expensive than they should be. It's the perfect metaphor for the cost of living crisis. Remember, poor as fuck. The minimum wage you earn playing this game doesn't get you very far, so you just have to keep grinding and grinding and grinding to even make a dent in the vast ocean of customization items in this game. But of course, this is Activision, so this is by design. Activision is the supermarket corporation to Nitro Fuel's ridiculous grocery prices. Nitro Fuel offers microtransactions that grant you a sum of Wampa coins for use in the pit stop. You can pay real money in exchange for fake money that has no real world value, like cryptocurrency. You don't need to be smart to see that this is a deliberate attempt to lure you into spending real money on this game on top of the price you paid to own it in the first place. You don't have to spend money on microtransactions, but the pit stop system is deliberately designed in a way that tempts you to do so, especially by preying on impatient kids who have stolen mummy's credit card. This and microtransactions across the whole industry is such an insidious, 
off-putting business practice that I really wish would die, because games these days are often built around intentionally making the game worse than it could be, purely to capitalise on microtransactions, and it's just not what games are about. It's why I prefer old shit. Fuck your Fortnite bullshit, take me back to the good old days. And finally, there's the online mode. It's great to have it, but unfortunately it's incredibly unstable and takes forever to find a race that doesn't immediately disconnect and boot you out. In the time it takes you to find a functional online race, you might be able to load one local race, and that's a damn shame. The game does have its problems, and no amount of screaming from Activision stick riders will change my mind on that. But the truth is, the pros outweigh the cons. Far and away, the pros outweigh the cons. Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled is absolutely phenomenal. It was enough to simply recreate the original, but they went so far beyond that. They somehow managed to improve the driving mechanics. They did an amazing job with the presentation, adding in so much detail and personality. They included tracks and battle arenas from Nitro Kart. They included bonus tracks along with the Grand Prix, additional modes like Ring Rally, Velo time trials, developer time trials, and then you've got the insane amount of customization items. So many playable characters from all across the series, with skins, carts, and other items referencing every corner of the franchise, even going as far as borrowing from Spyro. Sure, some characters are missing, but what we got was way more than what any of us were expecting. It's like I said before, Nitro Fueled feels like a celebration of the Crash Bandicoot series. Is it better than the original? As if that's even a question at this point, of course it is. The sheer amount of bonus content and the quality of that bonus content makes it such an easy question to answer. This is a game I could play forever. I'd rather not have to pull myself away, but unfortunately I've left my cat in the oven and I probably shouldn't leave it in there for too long. Wouldn't want it to burn, would we?